Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session. I hope everyone is keeping well and staying safe. As we all know that this is a very tough time for all of us, not only in terms of business continuity, but, the, but at the same time, it is the physical and the mental health that needs a lot of care. So please take care of yourself, take care of your families, and as we continue to believe that this too shall pass, right? So with that note, uh, now that most of the audience has joined in, I would begin. My name is Barbie, and I'm a part of the business development team of Kelton Tech, and I'll be the moderator for the session today. A big thank you for joining in for our webinar, uh, Digital 3.0, the essential lifeline for business continuity. Before we get started, um, let us do a little bit of housekeeping here. I would like to reflect on a couple of points. Should you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the Q&A section of your control panel, and we will be able to address them at the end of the webinar for 10, 15 minutes. Just in case we do not have the time to respond to all the questions live, we will respond to them by email. As a reminder, the session is being recorded. For those of you that has, uh, that has opted to receive a link to the recording and the presentation, we will be sending that out to you in the next few days. So before we actually start on the webinar, um, I'd like to spend some time talking about Kelton Tech Solutions. For most of you might know that Kelton Tech has been a pioneer of digital transformation for the past decade, with operations in Asia Pacific, North America, and Europe. Our clients range from startups to Fortune 500 companies with a core strength supported through our ISO 9001 certification and CMMI Level 5 compliance. We are a strong family of 1500 plus and is a publicly traded company. So what we do, we design, we develop and operate digital technologies that create new business models for our clients. So our digital services cater around six major pillars, digital transformation, digital integration, digital enterprise, outsource product development, digital commerce and marketing, IoT enable platform services. So for more information, of course, you can always go ahead and visit our website, which is www.keltentech.com. And Kelton Tech is with 2L. So this is uh, by and large as to what we do, but how we do it. So we do it with the help of people like Amit Grover and Sushil Ripati and many others, you know, who brings in not only the knowledge, but comes with a lot of passion and aggressiveness to help organizations fulfill their digital needs. So I'd like to spend some time talking about our uh, speakers today. So they are also the speakers for the afternoon. Mr. Amit Grover, uh, he is a strong techno commercial and project management professional with over 16 plus years of experience across designing, developing, and executing high-profile technology solutions, project management, pre-sales, product marketing, and business development. Whereas Trishil is our tech guru. He's working as a vice president technology at Kelton Tech. He's an expert of scalable system designs and has worked as a solution and technical architect for many years across all the major technologies in web and mobile and IoT space. So here's a warm welcome to you, Sushil and Amit. Thank you, Bobby. Hello, everyone. So without wasting any more time, I think I'm setting the agenda for today's webinar, wherein we will be covering the following points. The current state of business disrupt disruption across the globe amid COVID-19, the emerging trend of digital technologies as saviors to help businesses reinvent and survive these unpredictable times. The need of moving in the direction of digital now and in the future. So with that, let us begin the official webinar session for today. Over to you, Amit and Sushil. Thanks, Bobby. Appreciate it, uh, the introduction. A very good Thank evening you. to everyone. Hope all of you are staying safe. So as uh, all of us know that the novel coronavirus pandemic has triggered the biggest lockdown recession with factories shuttered, supply chain hampered, and markets crashing through the floorboards. Global enterprises are pushed to operate in the new way to maintain continuity and serve customers with equal level of quality, if not better. And what has seemingly bolstered their survival strategy? Their transformation to digital. 
leaders across the globe are digitizing their operations and rapidly adjusting to the new demand to lead through the crisis. So in the slides to follow, we will be discussing some of the most prominent use cases that highlight how digital technologies are helping businesses save the day and define the path for the next normal. So with that uh, thought, the first one who is in line of this pandemic is the government because government has to ensure that you know this coronavirus spread is stopped or you know contained to an extent and there are multiple things that they need to take care of like we know that in order to spread in order to stop the spread of the coronavirus it is important to track or trace the spread and also there is a need to spread the awareness in terms of you know uh, keeping the social distancing wearing the masks or staying at home or working from home and you know uh, so all these uh, awareness needs to be spread also there are a lot of type of rumors which are uh, you know roaming around about the lockdown about the hotspots about n number of other things so it is also important to keep a curb on those rumors and provide the right information to the to the uh, citizens and also uh, with the lockdown or with the hotspots which has been identified, it is also important to provide all the essential items to the people who are staying in the societies or in the areas which are hotspot. So there are a lot of digital initiatives which has been taken by the government to ensure the, all these things because there are natural, you know, there naturally there are a lot of people sitting at home and there is a very limited workforce or what we called is uh, COVID warriors who are out there, uh, you know, saving all of us. So digital is an important channel, which government has also identified and leveraged. So some of the applications or some of the initiatives which government has taken in this, uh, in this uh, uh, particular situation is one of them is Arogya Setu. I think all of you are aware about it. Our Honorable uh, Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi also talked about the importance of downloading Arogya Setu and he basically asked, uh, you know, everyone to download that application. And with that, if you see, uh, this application has recorded close to 75 million downloads till date. And what it does, it does, it basically help in tracking the coronavirus patients and also help people self assess and track the COVID-19 infection around them. Also, there is another application, uh, which is kind of similar to it, which is called Corona Kavach which also provides users with the real time location of the infected user. So if I'm sitting here, I can basically see who all are the people around me who are infected or what is the close proximity of the people who are infected around me. So I have to enable a feature like coverage on my mobile application that is Corona coverage. Similarly, you know, some of the state governments like Punjab government has also launched an application called Kova. And this is also an application similar to, uh, you know, uh, Corona coverage, which also help you track the coronavirus, spread of coronavirus, as well as it is also used for some of the other services, like in the, in the cases of curfew, because Punjab was under curfew. So in order to obtain the curfew passes, so you can basically log into the application and request for a curfew pass. You can also report any, anything which is happening against the law, like, you know, uh, a large gathering of the people. So you can report those large gatherings to the government so that necessary actions can be taken. Similarly, uh, due to the hotspot areas, there are uh, obviously the authorities has to ensure that the essentials, essential items are delivered at the doorstep of the people who are living on those hotspot areas. So like Noida authority came up with an application which is called Apurti Suvida, which people can download and request or, you know, order the essential items which they require and will be delivered at their doorstep. So in the uh, recent uh, uh, Man Ki Baat, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi also talked about covidwarriors.gov.in, which is another initiative that they have taken to link all the volunteers, not only the government, uh, you know, workers, but all the volunteers, be it a social organization, representative of the civil societies, the local administrations, all other people to connect together. And there are close to 1.25 crore people who have already been a part of this portal. So these are the digital initiatives which government has taken and the outcome of all those initiatives is basically there is a risk assessment. I sitting at home can, ex can assess my risk uh, of getting infected by tracking, you know, who are in the proximity 
who can be basically infected. Also, people living, uh, living in the hotspot areas can order essential items with the help of application like Apurti Seva. They can also report any, any malfunctioning or anything which is happening against the law. And there is an easy connect with the medical assistance as well. So government is taking all the digital initiatives and all these digital technologies are helping them in order to control or contain the spread of the coronavirus and you know make people uh, communicate with people and provide the essential services to the to the uh, citizens of india now next in line when the uh, next in line the most important sector is the healthcare sector uh, so how digital is helping in providing the healthcare services to the citizens of india as we all know the impact of covid 19 uh, that most of the small hospitals or clinics around india and um, in most part of the uh, most part of the world as well uh, are closed the opds are not working there are, uh, you know, most of the health workers are primarily working in uh, treating or curing the patients uh, with the coronavirus symptom. And not everyone is basically, uh, you know, trained enough to basically take care of the patients who are coming with the symptoms of coronavirus. So they also need to be trained. But at the same time, there are limited uh, training facilities or limited trainers available who can train the uh, next line health workers. Also, while uh, uh, medicines comes under the essential items, most of the shops are open, but due to the, uh, you know, issues with the logistic, with the transportation, the supplies or uh, there is a lack of stock, there is a lack of supply. So how digital is coming as a savior or what are the digital initiatives which are being taken by not only the government, but also by the uh, private sector <coughs> are like Indian government has launched an application called e-Sanjeevani, which basically what it does is it helps in telemedicine in the country. Uh, with this application, the government has tried to connect all the government doctors to bring all those government doctors on that platform so that the patients can connect with the doctors and get the consultation. Similarly, Manorama Info Solutions has also launched a ready to implement telemedicine solution to the remote teleconsultation of the COVID-19 suspect or patient. So there are a lot of areas which do not have the accessibility to the right healthcare services, but digital has the power to reach the remotest of the area. And with the help of telemedicine, definitely those people can also get the consultation or right healthcare services. And a lot of you know private platforms, private uh, companies, uh, platforms like 1MG, NetMats, Practo, Zoilo, CureFit, and many more are basically providing a lot of services with respect to the doctor consultation, with respect to the medicine supplies. And they are, you know, also uh, trying to be part, part of the community and serving the community. And they are also providing a lot of services free of cost as well to help the communities. And uh, to tell you that, you know, telemedicine, while it was going on for quite some time, but now, Telemedicine is becoming the new normal with a surge of more than 100% a week across the globe. This is not specific to India, but across the globe, telemedicine is rising with every passing day. So yeah. you can... Amit, yeah, Amit I would yeah. like to add some points there. That means like if you see these telemedicine uh, platforms and there are a lot of telemedicine platforms are evolving and uh, they are coming there and they are launching very fast. At the same time, there are like al uh, other uh, allied services like uh, even insurance and everybody is onboarding these telemedicine platforms into their platforms embedding there and providing the free of cost services, doctors, consultation and assessment and everything to engage with their customers also. So because it is a like uh, testing time for everybody, and the businesses, those are not able to actually run very smooth. They are able to at least connect to their customers and talk to them so that like one thing is like uh, they can, they are able to like, so that yes, they care for them and all that. And if you see like everybody would be uh, uh, getting a lot of messages, mails and all that from all of those service providers who actually care for you and uh, they care for your well-being. So it is actually going, uh, uh, like becoming a ve very good tool for being connected with their customers also at the same time. 
right and once you are connected with your customer you have an opportunity to basically communicate a lot of stuff so we will talk about some of the cases where your core business is something else but because you have that kind of connect and digital connectivity and digital platform you can do much more other stuff like you know you talk about one of the company who are basically using drones to for the logistics but now looking at the current circumstances that delhi government have asked them to basically use those drones for the sanitization uh, of the areas so they they are able to carry close to 10 liter of disinfectants and helping the government to disinfect some of the primary locations so while they are not into the core business of you know uh, uh, you know doing the sanitization but at the same time they are they are able to quickly adopt to the new norm quickly adopt to the need of the hour and provide those services which are most important for the communities for the country for the people right so some of the outcomes as we can see obviously you know uh, with the help of all these services like telemedicine now uh, people sitting at home uh, they are able to reach out to the qualified doctors uh, you know uh, to get the right consultation in the need of the hour uh, they are able to they need not to go out of the home uh, and you know breaking all those laws which are defined by the government they are able to maintain their social distancing there are doctors available online to uh, provide any kind of services and even the remotest areas are basically getting the services so uh, now the when the healthcare has been leveraging uh, you know uh, all the all the digital initiatives or all the digital platforms the next next most important thing which is required is basically learning so how digital is helping in learning and online collaboration as we can see you know with the with, with this uh, 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 pandemic most of the schools most of the schools uh, i would say all of the schools all of the universities all the colleges across the globe are shut right the entire workforce uh, uh, apart from the covid warriors everyone is sitting at home there are people who need to work there are people who do not have anything to do so but and 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 as we can see that the recent announcements which are coming up there is a less possibility that things will you know come back to normal anytime soon It means at least for the next 2 3 4 months you never know and after even after that you never know how things will uh, pan out to be so this is a natural impact that the learning has stopped if we would have been 20 years back definitely there was no other alternative to continue the learning or collaborate online but now we have the digital saviors we have a lot of digital platforms which are basically helping us uh, as i stated not only being uh, you know uh, productive but more productive than we were ever so if you see there are certain platforms like google classroom they have registered number of users are doubled now they have close to 100 million plus users in the google classroom another google meet uh, which is a video conferencing app i hope most of you people are aware they are being used 25 times as much as it was being used in the month of january 2020 and zoom means this webinar is also going on on zoom and there are a lot of other uh, you know areas where zoom has been uh, used and that has apparently become a most sought after video meeting tool among people during the lockdown and also being used by schools and several private players so all these uh, uh, digital platforms are basically ensuring that learning is not stopped i have two kids both kids have zoom classes there are three classes which are running every day so learning has not stopped schools have not announced any vacation or you know summer vacation they are continuing to operate the way they used to be also like the offices who are working from home all the offices are means uh, as productive as they are i'm i'm means if we talk about us we are over productive with the help of all these digital saviors and <clears throat> all the university colleges Uh, you know schools are leveraging these digital uh, tools to basically uh, ensure that the learning is continuous and office meetings are going so shall you want to add something here yeah, not only that that is we are seeing a lot of like surge in the request for like creating such type of like additional platforms where like that is embedded into the enterprises uh, own apps and definitely that means like everybody going forward is going for that where like they want a lot of digital collaboration even like their front line workers and everybody even their agents everybody like having something to collab collaborate with the client to talk to the client directly like screen sharing everything so 
right now the digital collaboration platforms online collaboration platforms are the most uh, needed even if you see facebook has come into a uh, digital collaboration platform and they they launched with dear messenger uh, microsoft team is already like uh, it was already there and it is like scaled up very much so every digital collaboration platform you see a huge surge in the uses and people are doing a lot of innovative things with that also and uh, there is also one impos uh, one important point which needs to be uh, you know looked at uh, that no one was prepared for such an instance means that while a lot of people are working from home a lot of uh, learning is going on even if you see that more than 50 million students are getting the uh you know classes online i i don't think so all these platform anticipated such kind of traffic but because they were architected in that way and there are you know cloud native applications as uh, uh, uh sushil talked about so they are able to scale up to the need of the r without breaking down yes so they are able to handle that kind of traffic that kind of search because they have been using the cloud native uh, you know uh, features and functionality so application has been developed in such a way that yeah. they do not break down in the case of situations like this and this is 3.0 actually it is going to be mostly mostly on audio visual a lot because of this people have experienced this a lot right now that is everybody has used it a lot that now everybody actually it is the next normal that means it is the de facto going to be in the even in ux interfaces also right 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 so uh, now when we have uh, the learning going on and you know online collaboration going on the work is going on as per normal and in the hotspot areas also you know as we talked about that people uh, the government is making sure that the essential supplies are being delivered but what about the rest of the people who are not living in the areas where the hotspot has been declared <clears throat> so next important thing is how digital is helping uh, to fulfill our needs of daily essentials so when we talk about uh, you know uh, how digital is helping uh, in terms of uh, fulfilling the needs of the daily essentials as we can see that most of the malls most of the shops are closed right uh, as we uh, understand that you know most of the malls most of the shops are closed there are restricted movement allowed uh, in some of the areas where are where there are curfews uh, shops are uh, you know allowed to open only for a limited duration of time yeah, like 8 to 12 or something of that sort and as we talked earlier that you know because of the transportation problem and because of the lack of supplies because these all these uh, you know mandis and all that stuff are not operational there is definitely a lack of supplies and lack of stock in uh, some of some some of the parts of the uh, you know uh, uh, some of the parts of the country so while uh, there are a lot of digital initiatives which has been taken in this uh, this era or this uh, situation as well uh, i think this is this is one one of the biggest uh, investment which has happened ever in the startups and you must have heard about this that uh, you know the collaboration between jio and facebook and uh, they were very quick uh, in terms of uh, realizing what they intended to do as we can uh, see that this is in the news that jio mart which is an e-commerce venture of reliance retail went live in three neighborhood surrounding some mumbai and leveraging a deal that gives it access to whatsapp's 400 million users in india currently under the world's most expensive lockdown so similarly uh, the confederation of all india traders and department of promotion of industry and industrial trades has also joined hands to come up with an e-commerce platform for all the local retailers and grocery stores which is also aimed to target uh, close to 7 crore traders online <coughs> I'm sorry. In line with this, Amazon India has also announced the launch of the local shops on Amazon. Uh, the idea is to bring all the local Kirana stores and go beyond that to expand their reach by taking uh, its selection online. And growers, uh, we also talked about you know uh, how the business models are able to adapt to the changing circumstances. Like growers has launched some online games on its platform for people to enjoy. similarly online orders if you look at the online orders they have exceeded or they have means risen almost 300% with an average order size increased by 200% so these are definitely uh, uh you know uh, uh, 
good on, on uh, good uh, from the digital perspective that you know people are able to leverage the digital services and able to quickly scale them up and this has been anticipated that in times to come like in 2021 uh, the st the analysts are estimating that close to 54% of all the e-commerce sales will will take place through the mobile devices yeah not only that itc uh, partnered with no broker and since no brokers food application is like everywhere in most of the societies they are placed they are actually able to facilitate the community buying that means if you order right. the itc truck actually comes to your community and they act, uh, they sell there only that means they give it to you and they go back so it is like how people are adopting with like these new digital technologies that means collaborating and if you see a lot of cross collaboration between like digital native companies and the offline companies a lot right right even when you talk about your like you know uh, swiggy zomato they have been providing the food services but now they have also added the essential items like you can order uh, floor you can order uh, other essential food items on their platform as well dominos has also started uh, you know selling the essential items along with selling pizzas so uh, with the help of the digital platforms it has be really become easy to uh, you know cross pollinate provide other services uh, because you are connected to the audience you are connected to your customers and 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 going further i see that means a lot of like a surge once again in in the uh, request on to the uh, like these delivery apps kind of things especially not only the delivery the pickup apps and all those kind of things for even high end restaurants and all that though they actually don't like foresee any near term like a surge of the guests in in their restaurants so how they sustain now they are working on a different model that how they can actually do not lose their brand that means and at the same time people are connected with them they are able to enjoy their cuisines so they are trying different type of models and trying to come back like with the digital and believe me many of them were not like near they were actually totally zero percent there that means right. they put an order online exactly means like PL, png has also collaborated with the e-commerce players for launch mm -hmm. of their product through live streams so that is also an example where you talked about you know uh, people are means offline and online collaboration is also happening in this time and that is only possible because of the availability of the digital platform which which have reached to the customers so once uh, you know when we see that uh, digital is helping in the fulfillment of daily essentials now we know that you know a lot of people are sitting at home and uh, and and there are a lot of things uh, which a lot of people who are engaged uh, in working from home but there are certain industries uh, which uh, can only operate uh, with the physical presence of the people so what do they people do at sitting back at home uh, you know there are closing of how do how do they spend their time uh, there is none other than you know entertaining but in 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 the name of entertainment as well all the theaters are closed all the movie cinemas halls are closed all the entertainment zones are closed all the water parks everything which which basically when you have a vacation time you can enjoy you can go out and enjoy but in this time when you do not have anything to do but at the same time you do not have any place to go so how do you entertain yourself so then again all these digital platforms come to your savior you talk about all the ott platforms like netflix prime you know z5 youtube hotstar all these platforms are basically helping people engage themselves however in some of the area online social gaming has like seen a surge a big surge in into demand and people are playing starting from even if you see google doodle is coming with like some of the games and all that so a lot of engagement platforms and definitely a lot of entertainment platforms are coming not only this we see a lot of like i have been talking to a lot of like these uh, entertainment companies who's, who are on the ott and everything they see a lot of like increase in their brand value not only the brand value the the advertisement costs and all that that is the revenue from that is increasing and they see a huge surge in the demand of the digital content they are on the over the top content and they are struggling even like to scale with like whoever is not ready with the scale they are not able to scale and their 
teams are working day and night to scale on the and that's why we see like a lot of like shift towards the cloud cloud native technologies in 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 every segment of the digital exactly and we have seen you know decent amount of increase in the subscription or in the engagement across these platforms and now uh, as we talked about the uncertainty about the current situation and it may take uh, its own good time to come back to the normal uh, so maybe some of the you know uh, uh, producers or filmmakers are also thinking about uh, launching their uh, uh, movies or you know different uh, things on these platforms and one of the example was uh, angreji medium which was uh, recently you know uh, released but they also release it on social media and uh, uh, we must means all of us here must be shocked with the uh, demise of uh, mr irfan khan who was a true legend uh, uh, may his uh, soul rest in peace but he has also kind of you know uh, uh, given a new uh, direction to the entire cinema and that this is also a platform where you can basically leverage uh the channel to reach out to your audience so uh with that thought uh, you know uh, as uh, we can understand that you know covid 19 pandemic has helped leaders refocus their attention uh, on the need of expanding to digital and in the wake of this outbreak uh, the business ecosystems has accelerated structural changes uh, to address the unforeseeable future with that thought uh, uh, you know uh, we understand that uh, the outcome will bear fruits uh, with time uh, and we want to um, you know uh, close this uh, webinar with that thought uh, there was uh, the idea was to basically cover some of the things some of the uh, areas where digital is coming as a savior as a initiative to help uh, connect with people provide the necessary services and it is now uh, you know in times to come it will become an imperative for most of the organizations to go digital and uh, uh, i would like to now open it up uh, for the q and a absolutely amit thank you shashil as well so while the discussion was on uh, and there were really good good insightful thoughts that you have given it to us so there are a couple of questions that has actually come in uh, i'll be taking them up individually uh, for others that are asking to they're trying to ask questions please type your questions in the q and a panel um, and we'll be happy to address them all uh, so the first question that we have is uh, what digital technologies are going to get a surge in times to come i think it's a very interesting one okay so that's really interesting and everybody wants to know that even garden forester and everybody is trying to predict but what i see in in my opinion it is mostly fast thing like whatever people have right now they would like to actually use it with more efficiently more integrated way and second thing is like if you see in the coming future that means i would say in the short term it will be most of the like the cloud native development and migrations on the cloud and serverless is going to take a lot of like uh, precedence on all other things then with, as i said earlier video in everything that means like video and audio in everything even gamers and everybody is talking about like put even if you see in the poker and all of that nobody now likes the avatars and all that they want to put the real video and all there and to give a like much much better experience so video in everything definitely is going to be one of that then on the enterprise side what i see a lot of like uh, uh surge in the uh, like rpa implementations because if you see the situation that means definitely everybody has a hit on their business and their revenues and earnings so most of these guys would like to actually automate mostly and definitely we don't know even like uh, how much time it is going to be so generally they are trying to go more of the automation side to create things more automated way because replacing anything is going to take a lot of time for now then definitely a lot of use of ai enabled things who are already digital they are going to be like use a lot of ai systems 
it will be into the video or into uh, even text analysis or even predictions and all that and if you see like right now in, in, in a lot of ai is being used and already has been used in the healthcare also to repurpose the medicines and using the analytics and big data technologies they are able to repurpose a lot of medicine and that's why uh, that is how you guys actually like if you have seen like even hydroxychloroquine or any of the even cancer medicines even medicines used in aids and all that all of that has been repurposed only because like we had a lot of data already and were able to actually do uh, all that analysis and find out the uh, like new way of using those uh, medicines so that is going to take a lot of things in long term i would say one is like if you see because there are a lot of consumption of the bandwidth and all that and these technologies are going to and especially video so 5g is going to be like uh, one of the game changer and i would say that now if we uh, like when we are able to like get over with this covid situation 5g implementation will see a lot of surge in the world and around that we will see a totally different use cases coming around because of that bandwidth and speed and all that then definitely what used to be like definitely everybody was talking at, at like even before covid 19 like for the distributed laser technology now we'll see a lot of use because if you see in this pandemic situation also you need a lot of traceability trackability and even like immutability of the data and all that I think the governments and even the private companies are going hard on to like using the DLT technologies and uh, extended reality is going to take a lot of like uh, precedence on the, especially on the training side and uh, simulations and uh, then quantum computing definitely right now people have put it on uh, like on the back bench but after COVID-19, once again, because of like these things coming, we'll need a lot of like computation, like different type of computation and all that. So, and who knows, something new also is going to come into that. Mm -hmm. To add to this, I also feel because uh, we talked about, you know, uh, for the, on the entertainment side, we talked about that most of the movie theaters are closed, most of the theaters are closed. And even when things will come back to normal, I'm not too sure, uh, you know, how much people will turn out to the theaters. And there is definitely, uh, I see, on my personal view, I see a lot of surge on the, uh, you know, VR related things, virtual reality related things, where you know, people are able to consume content uh, at their home, but to get that kind of experience, that kind of theater experience, obviously, I think uh, VR is something which is gonna, gonna surge a bit. Right. So we have another question. I think uh, we have less time. So we'll take up the questions uh, quickly. Another question is, how will digitization help supply chain and logistics in Indian context? Is it the physical infrastructure which needs to be fixed first before digitization? I think um, Amit can pick this up and probably uh, Sushil can also join in. Uh, Barbie, can you please come again? I just lost you in between. I'll just repeat the question, Amit. How yeah. will digitization help supply chain and logistics in Indian context? Is it the physical infrastructure which needs to be fixed first before digitization? Yeah, so supply chain, as we can see, means even when we talk about uh, uh, in the current context, we can foresee that because of the lockdown, a lot of uh, supply chain is getting impacted and a lot of companies are basically taking those initiatives to digitize their supply chain. While uh, when we talk about supply chain, it is more about, you know, how we connect the entire ecosystem together from an end customer to a local retailer to a distributor to the supplier or to the manufacturer. So uh, I don't think so. The physical infrastructure is that much is a problem. Uh, I think the internet as uh, uh, Sushil talked about 5G connectivity or the connectivity in the remotest of the areas has to go up. And secondly, uh, I think mobility has 
you know uh, reached to a level where it has become a commodity everyone has a smart uh, phone in their hands so enabling that uh, digitization in the supply chain should not be a challenge but yes education is uh, an important thing and digitization in that sector where we connect all the all the people in the ecosystem together with a seamless experience looking at the you know uh, kind of literacy or the exposure of those people to those, those kind of uh, digital technologies is an important aspect so i think one uh, uh, supply chain will see a lot of digitization in times to come there are certain initiatives which are being taken like if you see bisleri as recently launched during this lockdown they have uh, they have launched a d2c means now you can order bisleri bottles at your doorstep which earlier you used to do with the help of your retailer you call up your local retailer and order a bottle of the bisleri but now you can go to the bisleri website you can order from bisleri directly and they are basically you know uh, uh, bringing the retailers bringing the distributor together to ensure that there is the delivery of the product happening at the doorstep of the consumers yeah not only that even like once again uh, on that side now i see a true use case as amit said like uh, where the bisleri actually gone through like you can uh, directly order now i see the distributed laser, laser technology coming into place into supply chain also a lot where all the distributed network is coming on to that private blockchain of that particular supplier or that particular company and so here i see the use of private blockchains a lot there definitely on the global level or definitely we need to work on the policy level and from a consortium in india that means the government should come forward because the government is the ultimate regulator authority so they need to come forward and and, and uh, like create some ecosystem where uh, these things are much more easily possible absolutely so um, i think we are left with another 5 10 minutes so let's jump into the next question uh, it says social marketing is going to boost in agri input sector uh, facebook live youtube live have become the norm but these are very centralized how can sales team connect with farmers in decentralized way in a scalable way okay that is a very good question absolutely uh, one of the like close to my heart so definitely uh, on agri sector i i see a lot of once again surge and even like we uh, we are also like thinking a, a lot on this and there what i see is like once again as i said there is lot of like surge in the uh, request of the like building the uh, the collaboration platforms for for different sectors and like especially the vertical collaboration platforms onto that since like this decentralized manner every every uh, uh, organization which is like in agri agriculture or like suppose they they are into uh, something like uh, pesticides and fertilizers and micronutrients and all that so they need if you see they need a lot of things they need to train to to educate to the farmers and farmers don't have like uh, you know they are not very tech savvy so you need to uh, uh, you need to engage with them a lot but what i see in rural areas also at least like they are able to like use whatsapp or something these kind of things so companies are already they are planning and they they have come up with like two three things one is like fast is where they have come up with like uh, something uh, the video on demand that means the on on demand consultation with the scientists directly uh, on the call and on the video that is one thing then there is like uh, a lot of like bots and all those things coming i don't see much of the success in india at least that is people are not using that much but still like one is like about the pests and all that if you want to know something you take a photo and send it that is coming there for the sales person specifically so there is a lot of demand in this where we have a collaboration platform where only it works in like any mobile browser also the user does not need to actually download it okay so those type of things are like coming into and there are lot of work going on onto this and i believe in future definitely agriculture is one of the like 
most promising sector that is going to be even like i have been thinking on this like where suppose somebody is in crop insurance and all that how did do they survey so there are a lot of work being done like doing the survey using the drones and all that and predicting the yield of the uh, crops where that means you are able to predict the yield of the crop and based on that you are able to assess that uh, what should be the premium and all that and what should be the compensation based on that okay because in crop insurance the biggest challenge is that you don't know whether it is because of the whether or it is because of some 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 other element that means the crop has been destroyed or there is a less yield of that crop it could be like even the seeds are less sowed into that or seeds were of the lower quality so there are a lot of like variants there and people are working a lot in that direction i would also like to add in here you know uh, in line with the question which has been asked that how sales team can you know help the farmer know about your brand so uh, this with our experience working with some of the brands like dupont fmc we understand that you know uh, most of the farmers are uh, living at the mercy of the nearest retailer that what do he has to sell uh, they are completely relying on that but uh, with the with the access of the right tools with the sales people who are on the fields in the remotest of the area they can have the access to the most advanced information most latest latest information which with the help of which they can basically educate the farmers so there are a lot of camps which are being organized even by dupont or we talk about you know pharmaceutical companies or crop protection companies or pharmaceutical companies or other companies who are dealing with the farmers so they have the you know access to the digital channels like a app or could be a kiosk with the help of which they get trained and they can have an assisted kind of selling to the farmers or i would not say a selling or rather an education program and you know taking on their data so that the information can reach out to the farmers directly the benefits can reach out to the farmers directly the incentives can reach out to the farmers directly or all the coupons you know different type of discounts that you get in the online platform they can also have access to that kind of discounts incentives with the help of the sales channel so definitely with the help of all these mobile applications all these different digital channels sales team can really enable the end user in a more assisted manner to have access to all that education as well as uh, benefits thank you amit um i think it was really good points that you have quoted in uh, thank you shushil as well uh, th this is the last question that probably will take up um and the question is that how should organizations do digital transformation i mean i think there is a lot of stuff that we can talk about here yes, uh, yes. so yes let's take it up so yeah this is very interesting question and i have heard this questions uh, many times uh, you know there is a there is a uh, definitely multiple thoughts about how digital transformation should be done how should it should be carried forward so it is important to uh, understand and i would like to emphasize that digital transformation doesn't have to be overwhelming it is not something to check off the list but instead it is a mindset that becomes part of the organization culture and experience so when you talk about digital transformation one of the first goal of digital transformation is break down the internal silos to create a seamless internal experience when a company or an organization works well internally it is uh, you know uh, most often than not that it greatly impacts the way their external customer experience the brand in every area of an organization whether it is sales whether it is marketing whether it is delivery whether it is hr or every function of the organization has a role to play in the digital transformation and they really impact the customer in unique ways so i would like to say means rather than you know talking a lot about it because this is something that we do day in day out so we i would like to say that digital transformation is basically a journey and a lasting digital transformation journey is customer focused with an eye towards the future there is no end to digital it is ever evolving story so this is a journey not a you know destination so truly said um i think with this this was the last question that we have picked up thank you amit and sushil unfortunately this is all the time that we have at this point of time um audience if we did not have the time to answer your question we'll respond to them by email as i mentioned earlier we will be sending out the recorded version of this webinar in the next few days 
I would like to thank you again for joining us. You have been a fantastic audience. Thank you, Amit. Thank you, Shashil. Um, if you have any further questions or would like to know more, please drop us an email or call us on the number and the email address which is uh, given on the last slide and which is in front of you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day ahead. Stay safe.